in the next case, I'm going to start this out with a little bit of an audience challenge. And here's the challenge. Here's the lesion. And the question for the audience and for Dr. Pomerantz and I is, what is this thing? It's a big thing. And what I'm going to tell you is that there is enough information on this single view to arrive at a definitive tissue diagnosis. Really? Correct. Definitive. Definitive tissue diagnosis. I better hurry up and That's right. look some hard. Some of you guys will have it already. We're going to see if Dr. Palmer is going to let us have any fun with him, but I kind of doubt that. He rarely does. So, But in five minutes, for those of you who don't know the answer, you're going to have it. Well, we're going to show cases like this at the course, and we've got a solid but also a cystic component lesion in the cerebellum of an adult. It happens to be a 35-year-old, which is a typical age for this lesion. The most, prime, the most common primary tumor of the cerebellum in the adult is hemangioblastoma, so that would be at the top of your list, but I noticed you left me off right here. Yes, I was hoping you wouldn't see that. I, and I did see it because you left it there hanging for me like a hanging chad, and it's a small subpeal hypervascular nodule, so this patient has a spinal and a cerebellar hemangioblastoma. There it is again on the axial T1C+, and there it is again on the axial T2 weighted image with a little flow void within it, which is one of the characteristics of hemangioblastoma along with the enhancing hypervascular nodule and the cystic component. So you have to at least consider the diagnosis of von Hippel-Lindau syndrome and in fact favor it with multiple hemangioblastomas. The first thing I would do on my checklist, and we'll go over this at the course, is I'd look at the orbits to see if there is the retinal angioma or the retinal hemangioblastoma, which may present not as an enhancing nodule, but rather as a hemorrhagic detachment. And then I start thinking about some of the other important criteria, the so-called big six for von Hippel-Lindau syndrome, which is associated with chromosome three, the rule of threes, von Hippel-Lindau chromosome three. And what are the six cardinal lesions? Well, we've got cerebellar hemangioblastoma or cerebellar and spinal. Then we've got retinal lesions. Then after that, we've got cysts. Cysts of the pancreas, epididymis, liver, lung, and kidney. Then we get into pheochromocytoma and or renal cell carcinoma, and von Hippolindo is divided up as to whether they have one or the other. You've got epididymal cyst adenomas, and finally endolymphatic cyst abnormalities. So what's been your experience with these lesions? Because I know they they can really bleed like stink, and being a neurosurgeon, I'll bet you've been in the soup with these lesions. Actually, it's a really great case. The first thing is, uh, as far as the endolymphatic sac, so that's the other thing to look at when we're on a brain study. Good point. Looked at, looking at the eyes, make sure there's not a retinal one, and make sure there's not an endolymphatic sac. That would tie, up, tie it up for you. But it's actually a great case, okay? Classic enhancing mural nodule in a cyst. So you get in the cyst, you got this big thing there. It's color-coded. Okay, the same color as Play-Doh with the red and the uh, yellow mixed. You have to get around it because it's highly vascular. If you get into it, you're in, the, in for a bad day. But a lot of times they'll shell out, and these people can do great. Well, but like missing this spinal one, that could come back to haunt you, which you, which you, unfor you unfortunately didn't do. Sure. You, you said color-coded, though. MR is in black and white. You mean when you're looking at surgery? When you're looking in surgery, yeah, these are sort of clay-like. And th they're, once you see it, you're not, you'll never forget it. But it's a great case. These people do great. I've had actually great experience with it. So the problem is missing it, not recognizing it, and missing some of these associated lesions is where you really get into trouble. Once the diagnosis is made, this patient is going to do well. Von Hippel-Lindau syndrome, beautiful example. Let's move on to another case, shall we?